everyone. Welcome to the September 2021 virtual field trip to Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve. My name is Michelle Brocious. I am your BirdWalk leader this evening. I am a WCAS board member and field trip co-coordinator. Uh, just a little note about um, these virtual field trips if you've never joined us before. Uh, so every month I designate a location, a birding hotspot for folks to visit independently with their friends or their family, but not with a, a group from Audubon to go and visit, see what birds are there, see, you know, what, what else is there to see, take pictures, do a little journaling, um, create or, or keep a bird list and send those items to me that I then compile into a scrapbook and share um, in the call this evening. So last month in September, uh, we had a handful of people go to Headlands Dunes and submit their items to me and this is the, um, the call about that. Oh, there we go. Okay, so a, a little bit about um, Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve. Extensive development along the shores of Lake Erie has all but eliminated the presence of sandy beaches and dunes. Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve, located adjacent to Headlands Dune Thick State Park, and that should be Headlands Beach State Park, is one of the last of its kind in Ohio. This community is much more than just an accumulation of sand along the shoreline. It is a live assemblage of fascinating and highly specialized plants and animals occurring in an environment too hostile for most other organisms to survive. The most important dune developers along the lake and Ashtabula County coast are switchgrass and or beachgrass. Switchgrass or beachgrass becomes established on the upper beach along with annuals such as cockleburr and sea rocket. These lone grass plants quickly spread into huge root-like mats. The sand rapidly drifts into the relatively quiet vicinity of the switchgrass crown and deposition occurs. Switchgrass and beachgrass have an adaptation shared by many dune plants such as cottonwood, red osier, canada, wild rye, and sandbar willow. Despite an accumulation of sand around its crown, switchgrass or beachgrass continues to grow upward through the sand. And that is the description um, about the preserve and the, the plants and how the area is formed by Ohio Department of Natural Resources, Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve webpage. And then I took a picture that I shared there on the left hand side, um, the trail leading into one of the trails that lead into the preserve. All right, I wanted to, usually I don't have two pages about the location, but I really liked this description as well. Uh, this legendary site is one of the best birded sites in Ohio and is famous for its rarities and big fallouts of migrants. The rock jetty that runs out to the lighthouse is a fantastic observation point for conducting sea watches as well. The total headlands list is well over 300 species, approximately 75% of the entire Ohio bird list. Not bad for a 25 acre preserve. Spring and fall migrations bring a great diversity of songbirds and sometimes in enormous numbers. Over 100 species is possible on a good May or September day. All of the regularly occurring songbirds found in Northeast Ohio can occur at Headlands every year, including all of the warbler species and all or nearly all sparrow species. And that is a quote that um, was attributed to Lake Erie Birding Trail. I could not find Lake Erie Birding Trail directly like online, so maybe it was a publication or something, but it was quoted on the Birding in Ohio uh, website, Headlands Student State Nature Preserve page. And just so you know, where I don't have room to write State Nature Preserve, I have abbreviated it SNP. So that's, that's what that is. And then a beautiful photo by Sean Missig on the left-hand side of the lighthouse at the Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve. All right, target species. So uh, we were targeting the fall warblers, as was just seen on, on the last page. All of the warblers can be found um, at the preserve at one time or another. So a warbler is a small songbird in the family Perulidae. Warblers primarily feed on insects and depend on a warm climate where their main food source can thrive. They therefore migrate to the tropics in the winter and return north in the spring as temperatures begin to rise. Some warblers sport vibrant plumage and interesting patterns in the spring during the breeding season and then fade into muted tones in the fall. Also, there are a great number of immatures in the fall that haven't come into their adult plumage, hence fall warblers are often challenging to identify. Uh, Nancy Howell, board member WCAS, hosted a fall warbler identification program in September 2020 
with guest presenter Ryan Jacobs, staff ornithologist at Flat Swamp Bird Observatory. It is a wonderful program. I've provided the link to the recording there. If you have any, um, you know, if you find identifying fall warblers challenging, please uh, watch that recording. It is free to access. And then um, obviously you can't click on this recording to get that link, but uh, search for the scrapbook that will be published and that link will be active. Um, you can also search fall warbler identification on our wcaudubon.org website and find it that way. All right, and I, I included two photos here of a palm warbler, the one on the left, a uh, palm warbler in the spring um, that I took at the Cleveland Lake Front Nature Preserve. You can see how it has you know, a chestnut cap, yellow in the face, a lot of yellow on the side and on the rear there. And then compared with the palm warbler in the fall on the right, taken by Tom Fishburne at the same location. And as you can see there, you know, it, it's faded. There, there really isn't a rusty or chestnut cap. There no yellow on the face that I can see. There's a little bit of yellow you know, on the underside of the bird, but not too much. So just so you can see the difference between what a warbler could look like in the spring versus the fall. All right, so I'm up first. Um, I visited the preserve twice. So I visited Headland Dune State Nature Preserve on September 6th and 19th and um, sighted a total of 17 bird species across the two trips. On my first visit, I didn't arrive until noon and birded for a little over two hours. I had spent the morning kayaking and birding at Metro Lagoons with a friend, Amy, but I'm still nervous about taking my camera onto the water so I have no photos to show for that location. Uh, when we arrived at Headlands Dunes, we decided to take the more eastern entrance trail into the preserve and were pleasantly surprised by swarms of monarch butterflies stopping here at the preserve to feed on the late flowering bone set as they continue their southbound migration. There was even an eastern comma butterfly among them also enjoying the bone set. As we walked further into the preserve, I got a glimpse of my first and only warbler, a yellow warbler. Unfortunately, it was still a bit early in the month to hope for more warblers on this trip. And I have on the right-hand side a photo I took of two monarch butterflies at Headland Student State Nature Preserve. And there were a ton of them. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing to see. And then here on the left, a picture of a comma butterfly um, and then a yellow warbler on the right at Headland Student State Nature Preserve. And I think this was actually identified as the Eastern comma butterfly for me at iNaturalist just today by um, someone who gave me that suggestion. All right, so next we decided to go into the maze of trails and what I like to call the shrubby area, although there are trees there too. We saw absolutely nothing. We stood still and sat still for what seemed like ages and did not see a single feather. We finally decided to try our luck on the break wall. Uh, we didn't see a wide variety of birds on the break wall, but we did get really good looks at a juvenile barn swallow who posed for us. Juveniles are dark above, not as blue as mature individuals, and their cinnamon-colored forehead and throat are a bit paler. Also, juveniles have yet to develop a deep fork in their tail, although the tail is still very long. The swallow sat for so long I was able to snap over 100 photos of the bird, and I believe we even had to walk away. So there's one of the pictures I took on the left of the barn swallow on the break wall at Headland Student State Nature Preserve. And then out of the 100, I just decided to share two more. Um, one on the left there with its beak slightly open, and then it had flown to a different branch, although it kind of looks like the same branch, but it was a different one on the same tree, and I got a slightly different angle of it. All right, so we then decided to check out the beach and we're absolutely delighted to see four juvenile sanderlings uh, scurrying along the shore and among the maroon corpses of sheep's head from a natural mass die-off. Also spotted on the beach were ring-billed and herring gull as well as a turkey vulture. There's one of the photos I snapped of uh, a sanderling at Headland Dune State Nature Preserve. And then two more photos. So you can see the one on the right, um, the sheep's head. They were just, the, the four birds were just kind of weaving in and out of the fish. And then uh, two pictures of a ring-billed gull at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve. I love how gulls always look so grouchy. I love it. <laughs> their, 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 their beaks are shaped that they kind of look like they're frowning and they've got a little, their, their eyes kind of slanted or, you know, straight on the top. 
And then uh, here on the left is a juvenile herring gull, and then another ring gull gull on the right at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve. All right, so I was on my own for my second visit to the preserve on September 19th. I arrived earlier in the day than last time at 9.20 in hopes of sighting more birds. This time I cut over to a more wooded path that seemed to lead up to a fence and then back to an area that was off limits, but a nice stretch of trail in between. So at this location, I'm going to pause for a second, this location was kind of difficult to write about because there, I, there wasn't a park map that I found anywhere online or on well, there was one on site, but the trails didn't seem to be labeled. So I'm trying to describe as best I can where I was, um, having only visited this preserve a few times. So anyway, so I heard a Carolina wren in this area, but did not see it. Here is where I saw the only other warbler at Headland Dunes in September, the yellow rump warbler. I had hoped there would be more warblers at this location by the 19th, but it was not meant to be. I actually didn't realize I had seen a warbler until I was home reviewing my photos. This bird was high up in the trees, which is typical of warblers, and the sun was in my eyes, so I had difficulty seeing the bird. I didn't see the yellow or even get a good look at the beak, so I honestly thought it was a house finch with that striped breast. Uh, needless to say, I was pleasantly surprised to find I had photographed a warbler. So there's my picture, which actually, with it being so far up in the trees, I was happy with how that turned out. It isn't, it isn't too blurry, so I was happy with that. All right, I made my way to the shrubby area and had very little luck finding birds again. So I decided to spend more time being still in hopes of encouraging birds to come back into the area. I therefore perched myself on a pile of driftwood that was up on a hill uh, that brought me level to the top of a nearby shrub producing juicy red berries. A naturalist puts the shrub in the hollies genus. After a few minutes of being still and waiting, a gray catbird suddenly showed itself within the holly feeding on the berries. So there's the picture of the gray catbird at Headlands Dunes um, eating one of the berries. And then two more pictures of the gray catbird just kind of flitting around in, in the bush. I decided to head over to the beach for the sanderlings that I had heard were not only continuing to be present, but growing in numbers over the month. And sure enough, there was a massive flock of them running up and down the shoreline, probing for invertebrates. I started at one end of the shoreline within the preserve and walked the entire length, counting exactly 160 individuals with four ruddy turnstones in the mix. The ruddy turnstones were keeping near each other in the middle of the grain of sanderlings. A grain is the word used to describe a group of these birds. Uh, which I think is really cute, grain of sand, sanderlings. I think that's, that's really clever. All right, sanderlings breed in the Arctic tundra and then migrate primarily through the Great Lakes and Great Plains regions to their wintering grounds, which include both temperate and tropical sandy coastal beaches south of the Arctic. So here you can see on the right uh, a group of sanderlings at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve. And a few more pictures of the sanderlings at the preserve. And even more. And this is my last page of sandwiches, I believe. And then here are the ruddy turnstones at Headland Student State Nature Preserve. I was two hours into my visit when I decided it was time to wrap things up. I said goodbye to the sanderlings and decided to go back via the break wall. Here I saw a lone spotted sandpiper scurrying ahead of me. I tracked this bird up the entire length of the break wall until it took flight and backtracked to the other side of me and started scurrying along the break wall in the direction from which we just came. I was exhausted at this point, but I wasn't sure if I had a decent photo as I couldn't ever get near the bird. I therefore imagined I sighed deeply before continuing to track the bird who was now leading me away from the exit. After walking the length of the break wall back to my starting point, I decided I had enough photos and hopefully one of the shots will be good enough to share. And this is the one I picked. <laughs> it's, it's okay, um, but it, it was the best one. All right, so the spotted sandpiper at Headlands Dune. And then here's my bird list. I had 17 in all. My highlights included the ruddy turnstone, sanderling, uh, spotted sandpiper, the yellow warbler and the yellow rump warbler were the target species. And another photo of that barn swallow at Headland Dune State Nature Preserve on the left. 
All right, so next up is Al Rand. He visited the preserve three times and cited 47 species. So he says, Headlands Dunes is one of my favorite places to visit for shorebirds and to lake watch. This was a great location for this month since numerous shorebirds are migrating through the area. We also got lucky with some bad weather days that made conditions favorable for Jaegers, but I didn't see any. Its proximity to Mentor Marsh, Mentor Lagoons, and Fairport Nursery Road makes for a nice day trip. I made three trips during the month, September 6th, which I think I was there and I didn't see him, uh, the 17th and the 25th. Uh, the first day yielded the more shorebird species. The second day yielded the most warbler species. And the third day was a nice walk on the beach. Early mornings and late afternoons seem to be the best, but anything can show up at any time there. Being public, one needs to share the area with beachcombers who like to walk through the birds and in front of your camera. Although not encouraged, there are off-leash dogs that scare away the birds, too unfortunately. And so here on the right, a photo that Al ran took of gulls at Headland Dunes State Nature Preserve. Now he says, being new to photography, this is my first opportunity to get good looks at many of the shorebirds. It's amazing to think of the distances they cover during migration. Some breed in the Arctic tundra and winter in South America. Their time spent on the shores of Lake Erie is used to refuel before heading further south. Two of these birds are the silt sandpiper and the bear sandpiper. Both were present on the 6th, which was pretty awesome to me. So there's a picture he took of the silt sandpiper at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve. And then two more photos, the bear sandpiper on the left and um, a ruddy turnstone on the right at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve by Al Rand. So in addition to all the shorebirds and gulls, hundreds of dead fish, mostly freshwater drum sheep's head, had washed up onto the beach. This drew in dozens of turkey vultures and other raptors keen on finding an easy meal, either from the lake or from the air. One spectacular moment was when a peregrine falcon shot in out of nowhere and set off pand pandemonium of epic proportion. The thousand or so gulls scattered in every direction, as did some of the shorebirds, the falcon made chase of a sanderling that it managed to isolate from the flock. You think the falcon had the advantage, but the sanderling somehow outmaneuvered it and got away. I witnessed the drama through my binoculars only. And he did take a picture of the sanderling there on the right-hand side at Helen's Dune State Nature Preserve. As for all the dead fish, the die-off was caused by hypoxic, little to no oxygen water conditions that suffocated them. In speaking with locals and, re and referencing literature, the changing weather conditions in September will cause the lake to churn when the winds change directions. Throughout summer, the lake stratifies with the most oxygenated water being near the top, less oxygen in the middle layer, and low oxygen conditions in the lowest layer. When the water churns, the low oxygen water is brought up and creates hazardous conditions for the fish. Sheep's head will hunt near shore and are the most effective because they need highly oxygenated water. Locals reported that this happens every year. Although morbid, it's a good opportunity to get a good look at the fish close up. Park workers will get around to cleaning them up, but they deposit the carcasses in the dunes to provide nutrients to the very specialized ecosystem. The smell can get pretty bad at times, but luckily it's usually windy there on the beach. I tallied 47 species overall during my visit. And then I, um, I took a picture of a sanderling posing with uh, two of the dead sheep's head at Headland Dune State Nature Preserve that I provided for Al on the left-hand side there. Here are more photos by Al Rand. He uh, took a picture of a sunset on the left and then a great cheeked thrush on the right. So that's a pretty good bird. And then here is his bird list. Uh, notables um, on this page include the semi-palmated sandpiper, ready turned stone, silt sandpiper, sanderling, bear sandpiper, and the peregrine falcon. Of course, uh, he took a picture of a leased flycatcher at Headlands Dunes that is there on the left. And then his list continues on the next page uh, where I highlighted all the warblers that he saw since that is the target species. He saw the black and white warbler, Nashville warbler, common yellow throat, American Red Star, Magnolia Warbler, Black Birding Warbler, Yellow Warbler, Black Pole Warbler, Palm Warbler, Yellow Rumpel Warbler, and Wilson's Warbler. 
and then a picture of the Blackpool Warbler um, that Al Rand took at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve on the left. Uh, next up is Lisa Gerbic. Uh, Lisa visited the preserve on September 26th and had 24 species. And she says, I visited Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve only once on Sunday, September 26th. The weather was beautiful while I was there, 57 and 66 degrees and windy. I took the trail headed straight toward the lake. I walked along the beach hoping to see some shorebirds but only saw gold and double-crested cormorants. I noticed a juvenile bald eagle soaring above the harbor to the east. I hit the jackpot along the eastern edge of the preserve. I came upon a large mixed flock of warblers and kinglets and at least 11 different species in one small area. It was fantastic. I should have brought a chair. I would have loved to sit there all day watching them feed. I took photos until my arms were tired. Uh, the monarchs were also everywhere. I saw more than 50 resting, flying, and feeding along the trails. It was the perfect way to spend an early autumn day, which is excellent. All right, and there's a photo that uh, Lisa Gerbic took of a yellow warbler at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve. Some more photos, a common yellow throat on the left and Wilson's warbler on the right at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve by Lisa Gerbic. Black and white warbler on the left and American Red Start on the right at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve by Lisa Gerbic. Beautiful photos. Again, black-throated blue warbler on the left and yellow rumped warbler on the right at the preserve by Lisa Gerbic. And I'm so glad that she has such good luck with warblers. black throated green warbler on the left and the golden crown kinglet on the right at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve by Lisa Gerbic. Blackpool warbler on the left and monarch on bone set on the right at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve. Again, two more beautiful photos by Lisa. And here's her bird list. Uh, notable species include the golden crown kinglet, uh, and then the warblers, the black and white, common yellow throat, American red star, magnolia, yellow, black pole, black throated blue, yellow rumped, black throated green, and Wilson's. And another beautiful picture of a warbler, the magnolia warbler, on the left there at the dunes by Lisa. All right, Sean Missig. Um, visited the park three times and with a total of 16 species. The dates visited include 9-5, 9-12, and 9-18. He says, my first visit was on 9-5. The first thing I noticed while walking up the path toward the lighthouse was a gathering of monarch butterflies gathered amongst the trees on the side of the path. The clusters of butterflies were not as big as I have seen during previous migrations, but there were still quite a few there. It made for a nice start to the trip. Once I finally made it to the end of the path, I was on the main part of the beach. Ahead of me was the lighthouse, and I had Lake Erie on both sides of me. To my right, I saw a break wall with many birds standing on it. Most of these birds were gulls, but I, didn't, I, but I did see some cormorants, and an osprey made an appearance as well. I attempted to get shots of the gulls, but they were just a little too far out of my reach for anything of a recognizable picture. I did happen to catch one gull chasing the osprey in the air and coming close to attacking it. Uh, so here's a beautiful picture of the Osprey in flight at Heaven's Dune State Nature Preserve by Sean Missig. And then here's a lighthouse um, on the left. One, one of the um, pictures of lighthouses that, that really came out, Sean took quite a few, and they were all gorgeous. And I think I included at least one more in here um, of the lighthouse. And then the monarch butterfly on the right at Helen Dune State Nature Preserve by Sean Missig. Photos of a gull chasing the osprey on the left and a gull in flight at Helen Dune State Nature Preserve by Sean Missig. Ring, oh, I, I spelled that wrong. Not a ring bleed gull, a ring build gull, please. On the left and double crested cormorant on the right at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve by Sean Missig. And I will update that uh, typo before the scrapbook is published. All right. 
After this, I turned my attention to the lighthouse. As I walked closer to the lighthouse, my nose alerted me to an unfortunate fish kill along the beach. I later found out that this was not an isolated incident and affected much of the eastern Ohio coastline of Lake Erie. Thankfully, the day was perfect and it provided a great distraction while getting pictures of the lighthouse. I closed out this visit by walking the beach and sitting on some driftwood waiting for the sun to set. Uh, while sitting on the driftwood, I was able to capture a good-sized block of sander lane as they were investigating the beach. Uh, closer to the sunset, the gulls, ring-billed and herring, went into a frenzy and seemed to become aggressive as they were picking at the dead fish on the beach. As they were causing commotion, I saw the osprey in the corner of my eye. I, I drew my attention to the osprey and saw that it had a fish in its talons. At first, I thought it had grabbed one from the beach, but after I looked at the picture, I saw that the osprey grabbed a fresh perch from the lake itself. I watched the sunset, and I realized that this was the first sunset I had seen all year, a fitting end for my first trip. Uh, so, And Sean took an absolutely gorgeous photo of the sunset with you know, birds you know, crossing in front of the sun um, at Highland Student State Nature Preserve. And here, another one of the lighthouse at Highland Student State Nature Preserve, another two by the lighthouse by Sean Missig. And the Rainbow Gulls at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve by Sean Missig. Photos of Sanderling by Dead Fish at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve by Sean. Here's the Osprey with the perch on the left and another shot of that sunset on the right at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve by Sean Missig. Right, for my visit on 912, I decided to arrive earlier in the morning instead of the evening. This had proved to be a great strategy for seeing more of a variety of birds. I walked along the same path and I was instantly greeted by a northern cardinal. It didn't stay long, but its presence was known. I also heard the cries of a gray catbird and blue jays in the distance walking away at something. I unfortunately never found out what they were so vocal about, but they did make their way into the area. I also had a ruby-throated hummingbird buzz by my head on its way to some flowers in the distance. I tried and tried, but was unable to get a shot before it flew away. I continued up the trail and took my first available right. The sh short offshoot of the trail put me next to a small bit of beach by the channel leading in from the lake. There, here, there was a large pile of driftwood collecting in the corner, and many animals made use of this. Cardinals and blue jays were the most common, but I wanted to stick it out there for a little bit in hopes of seeing a warbler or other species of bird. My patience paid off. I spotted a black and white warbler and was lucky enough to get shots of it. Now that I had that shot, I was ready to move on. I had my way... I made my way back to the beach for more shots of the lighthouse and gulls. There weren't as many gulls or sanderlings during this time. I did have flyovers from cormorants and a few turkey vultures were circling above the tree line as well. And photo on the right-hand side there of a black and white warbler at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve by Sean Missig. All right, my final visit on 918 was in the evening again, and my dad was able to join me for this trip. We were instantly greeted by a small flock of birds that quickly took off into the higher treetops near the parking area. As I got closer to them, there was one that stayed in view long enough to snap a few shots. This was a northern flicker, and it was a great start to the night. We continued along the same path that I had been on the past two visits. Our first stop was the small beach area with a pile of driftwood. During this visit, that area was unusually quiet. After even more photos of the lighthouse, I turned my focus to the gulls and shorebirds once again. This time I happened to find a few ready turnstones mixed within the sander lane. I was happy to see some variety in shorebirds, and they seemed to get along for the most part. I also noticed that the sander lanes were great, greater in number as well. At several points, the whole flock of sander lane was flying along the water, and I was in awe of their synchronized movements. The sunset was beautiful and a wonderful end to the night. Headland Student State Nature Preserve is a beautiful occasion that I will return to many times throughout the coming months. I just might have an obsession with that lighthouse, and it looks stunning in winter. Uh, this was a great location for September's virtual field trip. A photo on the left-hand side there of the ready turnstones at Headland Student State Nature Preserve by Sean Missig. And then here, Sanderlene on the left and the block of Sanderlene on the right. 
at Highlands Dune State Nature Preserve by Sean. And then the species list. So notable species, osprey, sanderling, the black and white warbler, of course, being target species and ruddy turnstone. And another photo of the sanderling at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve. And I thought this was such a cool photo with that big wave uh, splash uh, behind them. So very, very cool photo, very well done. All right, Nancy, uh, usually like to take Take your section, so let me know if you want to do that. Yes, I will. Um, first of all, I really am enjoying everybody's write-ups and stories and photos, and it was, it was, it's terrific. Um, I, I will let you know that I wanted to get out to the dunes um, often and maybe more than once, but I was only able to get out there on September 28th. Um, one day I was headed out there and. Strangely, my car just pulled into the Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve instead. Don't you so, hate uh, it when that happens? I You're know, it's just God. terrible. <laughs> that darn car. Anyhow, um, yeah, and then September almost disappeared. So I'm like, I have got to get out there. Um, it was pretty cloudy and windy that day. Um, but uh, I, was, I was able to get a few photos, not as nice as everybody else's, but... But it was uh, it was very nice, and I I uh, walked along the beach. I walked uh, on the uh, the sand dune area, walked in the sand dune area, and I also covered some of the trails that were uh, much closer to the parking lot. And you're right, they're they're not named per se because there's a lot of rogue trails through some of the shrubs and things. But I tend to find the far eastern. Um, just by the picnic area, there's the, like you say, there's a fence, and yeah, you can kind of go over the fence and walk on that, on that road, um, but you have to be, you know, careful, but uh, usually I find that is a pretty good area for, for birds. So, like I say, the day was, was kind of threatening, and, and it looked, looked like rain, um, but, but again, the weather just really showed that it was clouds and then it was going to be clearing uh, later on, and it did. Uh, but the wind was really kicking up, and uh, so the beach didn't really provide as many birds as some of the other folks were able to see. Uh, sanderlings were the only species along the beach, uh, shorebird, I should say. There were a couple of others. Um, but. Um, the, the plants are always fascinating in the area, again, because of the adaptations they have for the harsh conditions. Uh, think about you know, wintertime when it's blowing and icy. Think about summer when it's blistering hot and, and sand, of course, is very dry. Uh, or just windy conditions where sand is blowing and it can be, you know, it can sting. So, um, so it was good. Alrighty, so next next photo or next uh, slide, please. And yes, I was able to catch a couple of species along the beach. Not the nice up close pictures of the sanderlings like other people had. And I didn't get a hundred and how many did you have, Michelle? One hundred and thirty or something like 100 that. One hundred and sixty. Oh, one hundred and sixty. Yeah, I didn't have any that many, but I didn't walk the entire beach, and there were more down the beach. But uh, all I had were sanderlings, and I was able to get a couple photos. And uh, turkey vultures were also on the beach, probably um, taking a look at those nice dead fish. And yes, there were a lot of dead fish. But I like looking at the stuff that's caught in the strand line, whether it's uh, shells, fish, uh, driftwood, rocks. You just never know what's going to be there. Uh, sanderlings, of course, run back and forth uh, at the shore edge, uh, following the waves. So it's was again kind of kind of fun to watch them. Um, and it says, sure, we're a lot of dried fish and dead fish on the, on the skeleton and skeletons uh, on the on the beach. But it was I didn't smell anything. But with all the wind, the turkey vultures were were like hang gliders right at uh, where the wood wood area. The forested area uh, meets the beach. I mean, there were 20, maybe more in the in the air at one time, and they just they just hung there because they found just a nice place where the wind was blowing, and they just 
I'm like, that's the way to fly. I, I like that. So uh, gulls, uh, ring-billed and herring gulls on the beach, some cormorants, uh, Canada geese uh, flew by, and uh, a bald eagle, adult and immature, were also beach dwellers. Next slide. And I took a lot of pictures of things that were on the beach, just like, you know, this molted feather or feather from a bird that maybe had passed, a uh, gull feather. But what I really want you to look at this feather when you, when, I don't know if, if you have a, a pointer, Michelle, that can go on here. If, if you don't, don't worry about it. But um, white feathers are not quite as strong, or the white parts of feathers aren't quite as strong as the dark parts of feathers, if, you'd had it not, if you hadn't known. Um, so the tip of this feather, you can see the very tip is black. But then it, the white that's down a little bit be below it, uh, it looks as though it's been chewed away on the wider edge. It just has simply worn. So white feathers uh, will wear uh, much quicker than dark feathers. So that's why a lot of large white birds, so think snow geese and white pelicans and whooping cranes, not all, but, uh, but gulls have dark wingtips, so they don't wear quite as much. I know there are some species that have white wings, um, but they, maybe they molt more often, or maybe have something a little bit stronger in their feathers. But it tends to be that dark feathers have more strength. Um, well, with the wind so strong, um, uh, the cottonwoods were losing leaves left and right, and boy, I'll tell you, I counted a lot of leaf birds. <laughs> they were just like everywhere. Um, I was able to get a good variety of warblers, uh, as they were the target species, and there were several others. Um, some of the migrants included a sapsucker, the yellow-bellied sapsucker, uh, a lot of northern flicker, uh, blue-headed vireo, both golden and ruby-crowned kinglets, and the golden crowns really outnumbered the rubies uh, about five to one. So for every five golden crowns, I was able to see a ruby. And uh, this, of course, will be on the list. The, the warbler is black and white, Tennessee, Nashville, American Red Start, Magnolia, Black Burnian, Black Pole, <coughs> Black Throated Blue, and lots of yellow rumps. Some of the more common local species, uh, you know, the morning dove, a cooper's hawk zoomed by, uh, a red-tailed hawk sailed by, uh, both red-bellied and downy woodpeckers were there, red-eyed vireos, which are also a migrant, uh, blue jays, crows, titmouse, nuthatch, Carolina wren, catbird, bullfinch, and cardinal. And again, I liked looking at stuff on the beach. Uh, the photo on the left are, well, they are little. Any idea whose footprints are on the beach? Well, they were Sanderling footprints, so I thought that those were kind of cool. But then the ones on the right are turkey vulture footprints. And uh, so that was, that was pretty cool to, to see the, the shape and the size difference. And yes, the circle of life. It was not only fish that I found dead along the beach, but there was driftwood and this unfortunate gull uh, that was deceased on the, on the beach. And there is my list. Yeah, ta-da. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I, I highlighted some that I, I felt were notable. Sanderling, the bald eagle, uh, the ruby crowned and golden crowned kinglets, brown creeper. I, I, have, I hardly ever see them, so I always, um, I love it when people see them. I would like to see one again someday. And then, of course, all the uh, warbler species are highlighted. That was the target species. So thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you. All right, next is a Tom Fishburn. Tom, did you want to present, or do you want me to go ahead and take it? Yeah, as long as you can hear me, I'll, I'll go ahead. Yep, loud and clear. 
Yeah, I got there four times um, and uh, enjoy the area, the, you know, the headlands and as well as the whole mentor area. Um, you know, to me, it's a good choice uh, for birding any time throughout the year. So, and I don't get there often enough, but you know, September was a welcome um, month to visit. So um, I went often, um, always in the morning though. And unfortunately, I did not choose the best days. I didn't do as well as everybody else. And I, I heard reports, uh, boy, I wanted so much to, to, to see the uh, ready turn stone. So I envy you guys that do get to see the ready turn stone. Um, my best day was the uh, early in the month or the second. And um, the whole month was good for the sanderlings. And, and I, I enjoy sanderlings for sure. Um, and there were reports there and a lot of places along Lake Erie uh, from what I had heard. Um, not too many warblers um, uh, any, of the, any of the days I visited, but the best warbler I got to see was a black-throated blue, which I got a quick look at, at at the end of the month on the 29th. And that's when the ruby crown and golden crown kinglets were passing through, too. And uh, they were really quick running around. I didn't get any good pictures of them, but uh, always fun to see them going through. And, and yeah, I think like Nancy said, you know, uh, a lot more golden crowns than, than the ruby crowns. I think that's normal. Even in the springtime, it seems like you have these large flocks of golden crowns coming through. I think Sean, I remember Sean had a great experience of that um, uh, as well, which is always fun. Um, so besides spending uh, most of my time at the dunes, I also visit the Wake Robin Boardwalk and the Lagoons area uh, as well. I um, hard to pass up on those areas when I'm uh, in the area, so um, and so there's a sanderling photo, and one of I took I, that was one bird I got to take a lot of pictures of, and there's another one there. So, um, all right, next slide. Let's see what you got. Oh yeah, so I got um, yeah that I always like to see see the waxings. I don't always get good pictures. I was pretty happy with that, even though it was in the shadows. It was kind of a nice pose there. And um, the uh, song sparrow was nice and short. That was at the dunes by the by the break wall, kind of in the woods area. And the um, eastern wood peewee, which uh, I wasn't sure what kind of um, a fly catcher that was when I when I saw it, but I was able to get it confirmed um, later that that was an eastern wood wood peewee. So that was nice to see it as it paused there between a a flight where they were jumping around. Um, what you got next? Um, yeah, I did see one leaf sandpiper. That was on the beach, uh, kind of with the sanderlings with that uh, that day. And then um, the spotted sandpiper. Seems like you know, I've seen more spotted sandpipers, and ju they're all juveniles. So we, you know, we saw them at um, at um, along the Cuyahoga River there. In the, in the flats, and Nancy and I, I saw them, you know, a couple of times this uh, summer. And there's one even near home in Berea here. So it's, it's, they're a fun bird to see. Um, and they're, they're juveniles, which you can um, identify by the coarse barring on the, uh, the wings. So kind of, I don't know if you call that the flanks, but right by the, right above the white area, it, it tends to be coarse. And uh, that's what I learned this year for the really first time, how to tell a juvenile apart from the, uh, just um, um, adults that have lost their spots. I think, I think Nancy, I remember you mentioned we saw one early at, uh, along the Cuyahoga there that didn't have spots. And um, that's when I got curious as to how to tell the difference. Uh, okay, what you got next? Next slide. Couple more sanderlings, and uh, I like the the cobble of the of the beach that's there, and um, that's good habitat for piping plovers. I understand now that we're learning about that, and uh, uh, if you guys have heard, they're going to actually close a good part of that um, preserve uh, and protect the area uh, for the piping plovers as well as the 
vegetation. They have a, a good number of uh, endangered uh, species there. I was very happy your introduction, uh, Michelle, was interesting to me because I've been hearing more about the about the dunes. I've talked to the preserve manager there too, and he was telling me about how they want to protect this this area. I believe it's starting November first. Um, they're going to uh, close off a section of the of the preserve because the piping plovers are seem to be now that they've been at Palmy Bay, you know, we're they're hoping anyway that uh, maybe piping plovers will show up some spring. Um, next slide. Oh yeah, and then I got the uh, semi palmated plover. That's the only one that was in the mix that day and uh yeah, uh, the behavior was interesting too. It kind of tends to run and stop, run and stop. Um, and uh, I caught that a couple of times. They're always a cute little bird to see. So I was happy for that one. Uh, next slide. In the goal, of course. Yep. And, uh, got a, a juvenile hairy gull in flight on the left and got a picture of a, an adult there as well. I understand it takes about four years to, for herring gull to mature into an adult. So you get all kinds of um, dark colors in between. Um, so there was activity. What you got on the next slide? Oh, wait, you got a, hey, head back up a second. You had a cool fact there. I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah right. oh, four years to become an adult. You had put that in there. Okay. All right, go ahead. Yeah, at at the lagoons one morning I I stopped at the lagoons because I heard there was a, a glossy ibis showing up there. I never did get to see the glossy ibis, but as I'm looking, I was hanging out there for a while. Um, a couple of birds um, were in the uh, shrubbery, kind of pretty close to where I was, and I, I didn't see what they were right away. But then I realized, oh, my goodness, they're wrens and marsh wrens, which are a treat. I, I don't get to see marsh wrens a whole heck of a lot, at least not well. And they got such nice intricate uh, feather patterns on them, so I got a few shots off uh, of the marsh wrens. I was happy with that. Next slide. Um, yeah, the day that uh, the, I spotted the marsh wrens was it was a little foggy out there on the in the in the marsh, and uh, I took the picture of the great blue heron at a distance there. Um, then um, at the boardwalk, um, I did catch a, a warbler, a yellow rump warbler, uh, as I uh, roamed the boardwalk. I was really at the boardwalk hoping for one of the special sparrows that I've never gotten to see. They call them the orange orange sparrows or Nelsons or the Lacan sparrows. There's been some sightings this year of the Nelsons anyway, but um, there are two sparrows I have yet to see. Uh, next slide. Yep, and along the road, on the main road going into Headlands Dunes is where the, you could spot the uh, eagles, and they had uh, a family again this year. And so um, I saw the adults, but I didn't stop quick enough to, to catch the adults. Um, so one of my later trips, I was kind of looking more carefully, and I, I did um, spot uh, three uh, juveniles all on the same tree. So the picture on the right, um, there's actually another juvenile down at the bottom, which is the one on the left-hand side there. That um, that's not in the picture on the right. So there's all three of them were on that 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 dead tree there. So I stopped on the way in uh, kind of quickly. Yeah. Of course, that the people at the marsh area they're, they're thrilled that the um, eagles are doing well there. Next slide. Okay, that's it. All right, Here's thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tom, um, for sharing your experience and your beautiful photos. And thank you to everyone, Al Ram, Lisa Gerbic, Sean Missig, Nancy Howell, and Tom Fishburn for visiting the location and providing your descriptions of your visit. And a huge thank you to the Ohio Department of Natural Resources for Headland Student State Nature Preserve. Um, I put the address there if you're ever interested in visiting, put that right in your GPS. Now when you pull into the driveway, 
take a right and then head all the way to the right on the parking lot, and that's where the preserve is on the far east side. Um, if you park anywhere else, you're at the, um, the Headland Beach State Park, which is also fine. There is a, a nice paved path at Headland State Park. Headlands Beach State Park right between the parking area and um, the beach and there's all sorts of trees and shrubs there that you can see birds in as well. All right, and please visit wcautobahn.org for more virtual field trip opportunities this month, the month of October. Uh, we are visiting your favorite cemetery in you know, a celebration of Halloween. So cemetery birding is very popular. Lots of birds like uh, cemeteries because they're quiet and there's, you know, trees and plants. Um, so it's a good place to go and look for birds and we're looking for um, sparrows this month. So with that, I would like to um, open uh, the floor for discussion. Anyone have any comments or, or questions for um, anyone else on the call? Where is the, uh, Tom, where is the wake Robin Boardwalk. Is that what it's called? Wake Robin? Yeah. Okay. Well, Wake, yeah, there's a street called Wake Robin, um, and uh, there's a little parking area there. Um, it's on the north side of the marsh. So if you, hmm. if you think about the um, the marsh with um, the state park and, and the preserve on the east side, and the lagoons on the well, on the way west side, um, Wake Robin Boardwalk uh, is, is in the middle, basically, uh, on the north side of the marsh. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the road that you, you take to get there, but I can't remember right now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, part, uh, it's, it's part of Minor Marsh. Yeah, it's, it's part of Minor Marsh. Okay. Um, and... Um, yeah, it's a nifty, nifty little. It's, it's really not much to the, you know, it's not long at all, um, but it's neat to see. Um, and uh, since they've um, helped with the uh, the marsh and got rid of a lot of the five mighties and things, um, um, more whales have been showing up, um, particularly in the springtime. I didn't see them. When I, I did go in the spring this year, but I didn't get to see the grails. It, the habitat seemed a lot different. But a year ago, I got uh, really nice uh, views of the Virginia rail out there, and there was Sora as well, from what I understand. Um, and uh, it used to be that that was a place to go at the end of September, beginning of October, to see the special sparrows. And I, I've done it, I've tried to do it several times, but I've never, never done it hmm. where I actually got to see them. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to check it out sometime. Anyone else? Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for their lovely photos and their wonderful checklists, and it's it's, it's been great. Excellent, thank you, Nancy. All right. Well, if there is nothing further, then I, I guess we can call it a night. Um, thank you so much for calling in and participating this evening, and I hope to see you next month. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. Thanks.